hammer, screwdriver, needle nose pliers, um, some snips are helpful, and that's about it. Now, most chairs are trapezoidal, whereas the rush pattern is actually rectangular. So there's an area that we're gonna have to fill in to accommodate the trapezoidal shape. We're gonna take the front measurement here, 12 and an eighth, nine and three quarters. All right, the difference is two and three eighths divided by two is one and three sixteenths gusset on each side. These are really goal posts that you're shooting for. And the last thing I like to do once I've made the marks is measure in between them, nine and three quarters here, and that's nine and three quarters on the back as well. One difference when dealing with squared rails is that you do have a really sharp edge on both the front and the inside here. We like to take that edge off a little bit. We've taken some time and rounded all of the edges on the top, both inside and out. And now it's time to start weaving. You're gonna start with a tack on the side rail. The pattern is over the rail and up the middle. Through this entire process, it's always over the rail and up the middle. You're wrapping each corner individually. The pattern works towards the center. We're using a 532nd inch fiber rush. It's a twisted paper product. The paper rush can be a little stiff and the more pliable it is, the better you can make corners and you don't want to let it soak. You're just kind of dipping it in, you knock the excess off, work the water into the rush. I'm always very careful to keep it in a nice spool. We're using a number three upholstery tack. Put it onto the material, give it a little tap. You want to start your tack about an inch, inch and a half from the front rail and middle of the rail. You can see all these other tack marks from the previous weaving. Definitely don't want to use those. All right, the pattern itself, over the rail, up the middle. And I'm wrapping this corner over the rail, up the middle. Now I'm coming across. Once this corner is wrapped, then you move to this corner, over the rail, up the middle. Wrapping the right corner over the rail, up the middle. I like to rough the pattern in and then deal with the tension. Okay, I think of rush patterns as straightaways and corners. And when you're pulling on a straight, you want to pull it pretty tight. Wrapping and holding the tension that you've just created, coming up, and then pulling the material across. You don't want to pull it too tight because then it pulls things out of 90 degrees. All right, here's your next straight away here. So you want to pull that good and tight, wrap, holding tension, and then coming across, coming up and making that crisp corner. All right, we're gonna have to put another tack on this rail. Get a tack started it in, pulling tight, and then hammering in on this side. And you want to go into the middle, the middle of your rail. And cut this tail, and it's time to do it over again. We're going to do two more wraps, and then we'll talk about adjusting. And adjusting is very important. That's the difference between a really clean seat um, and one that's just sittable. If you've got a pneumatic stapler, and you're doing a lot of these, it is very helpful. We use a 3 16 crown stapler. So I'm over the rail, up the middle, over the rail, up the middle, over the rail, up the middle, over the rail, and up the middle. Tight on the straightaway, and not quite as tight when you're making the corner. Tight on the straightaway, and not quite as tight.
and I'm spacing the tacks out about an inch, three quarters of an inch. What you want is for your strands to work their way up the rail. All right, over the rail, up the middle, over the rail, up the middle. That's the mantra through the whole thing. Over the rail, up the middle. If you ever find yourself going down the middle, your the pattern is messed up. Tight on the straightaway and also tight in the corners. Come across, tight on the straightaway. And when I'm making a corner, I'm actually guiding it. I'm pushing and kind of pulling this strand and this strand together a little bit. And eventually those strands are gonna to be touching. You can't do that all at once because of the thickness of the rail. You want to guide it and create the corner using kind of a pinch motion. Every three strands, I stop and make some minor adjustments. Compressing the material on the rail. Kind of go on the top of the rail and then underneath. And you do that in one, two, three spots. The idea is that you want the most possible material on the rail as you can get, so compress it. Next is looking at these corners. The idea is to keep these strands as close to 90 degrees as possible. This one I'm leaning out just a little bit here, so I'm going to get in between and tap them over just slightly. And I'll do a little compression there too. Compression here to keep that at 90 degrees. And then do the same on that corner. Time to flip the chair upside down and adjust the bottom. Same adjustments. Compression and these corners. And the bottom is never going to look quite as clean as the top does. You want to make it look as nice as possible. Time for three more strands. So I've continued to add strands in, tacking, or in this case, stapling up the rail and working towards the gusset mark. And I have space for one more strand. And I'll be hitting that gusset mark. And then this space in between here will be the same as the space in the back. And I can start to incorporate all four sides of the chair. See how pulling this strand and that strand together makes a nice clean corner. I do keep my hand on the material the entire time. You don't want to lose tension. The whole it's kind of the the key with rush weaving is to keep the tension on it. Not necessarily always the maximum amount of tension. Take a measurement here and take a measurement on the back. A measurement here in the front is nine and three quarters. Back here, nine and three quarters. We're good. You start the same way on this side. There we go. The difference is that once you've wrapped the two front corners, instead of ending with a tack here, we're going to start to incorporate these back corners. The pattern's the same over the rail and up the middle. Wrapping that corner over the rail, up the middle, over the rail, up the middle, over the rail and up the middle. I usually don't get more than a circuit. It, it depends. Uh, if you get too much, it's just harder to see what's going on if you wrap a whole bunch of it loose. Tight on the straightaway, pinching your corner. Not quite as tight. Right here, tight. Pinching the corner. Good. 
I find that it's really difficult to pull away from yourself. So I like to rotate the chair. And rotate the chair, now I'm pulling to the side. Much easier to get more tension that way. In the corner, making the corner. Come back. Tight on the straightaway. And the pattern from here on out doesn't change over the rail and up the middle, wrapping the corners. And I put in three strands, three wraps, and then make adjustments. And the adjustments are the same, but the difference is, is that you've got four corners instead of just the two. Can't stress enough how important it is Really make sure that these corners, when you're making the corners, the purpose is taking those two strands and kind of lashing them together. That's, that's a huge key to a clean, uniform rush seat. And I used to be able to do a lot of these, but it takes, it takes a lot out of you. You can do a little at a time and come back and let things, you know, let your chair sit overnight and come back in. A half a chair a day is an accomplishment. Well, the third strand in here. And through this whole thing, I'm keeping this in a nice loop. Uh, and I prefer a loop as opposed to a shuttle. Forcing it onto a shuttle seems to make kinks in the material. We can't stress enough how important it is to keep maximum tension when pulling on the straightaway and not as much tension when making the corners. The pinch in the corner, again, is very important. Every time pulling this strand and this strand together, and then capturing it with the corner. Now because of the thickness of the rails, these aren't quite gonna come together, but these corners are pulling this strand and this strand a little closer every time until they start touching. Okay. All right. That is three, three full circuits. At this point, we're going to come back and make all the same adjustments, this time on all four corners instead of just the front. So that's compression. I'm not going to be able to compress where, um, where the clamp is. So I'll come back and catch that when the clamp is in a different spot. Yeah. Compression. Compression where there are some gaps in here. Now that is a nice crisp 90 degrees. All right, adjusted on the top, turned over, adjust on the bottom. It seems like a lot of adjusting, but it really makes all the difference in the world to keep the uniformity and make sure that you don't have any crazy issues and spaces and gaps when you get to the middle of the pattern. If left to its own devices, the material starts to shift and then you end up with um, issues when you get to the center.
I'm going to continue putting strands in, making a circuit, and making adjustments every three rows. When you run out of material, you're going to want to tie a new strand on. It's easier to get the knot tight if the material is a little wet. So starting out with a regular beginning of a shoelace knot, this strand is over the top of this strand, then you want it to be over the top of this strand also. And make a shoelace knot and pull those together. It's two U's attaching to each other. It's great because you can adjust and move the knot around. Um, also, the tails lay together, and so they'll lay nicely in the pattern. You want to leave the knot kind of in the middle of any of these four quadrants, and that knot will become completely invisible as this material comes over the top of it. Pull it good and tight. I'll give it a squish, put the tails off. Once the rail is filled up about halfway or a little over halfway, it's time to put some cardboard in. There is an obvious gap in here on all four quadrants. We want to fill that with cardboard. It gives you a lot more stability. The cardboard that we use is in Normal thickness, you don't want the real thick stuff used for heavy duty boxes and also not the really thin stuff. You want the corrugation to run actually diagonally. You don't want your cardboard to be totally the size of the space that you're trying to fill. It won't ever fit in. You're gonna slide one end in, bend in the middle, slide the other end in, and by pulling that all the way to the front, I'm filling up this little bit of space here. I don't want it to be a big bulky knot here in the middle. I kind of want this to stair step down as I go. And so I'm going to cut things in order to accommodate that. And I want to go close to the edge here. Thicker rails and the square rails uh, exaggerate what you'll see in a lot of chairs where one side has more space than the other. If you've got one side that has more space, we can use a partial. I'm gonna cut this off too. Now, if you have any partials, you just wanna make sure that they are sandwiched in between solid triangles. I like to get a piece of cardboard up on the rail. That's going to mean that with usage, it's going to have to wear through the rush and wear through this cardboard before the rush can start breaking. What you want is a, this stair step slope that the material is doing naturally. And at the end, you want kind of the size of a box of cards in the middle so that you can pull material through still. The difference here on the sides is that you have a longer leg and a shorter leg. When you're cutting the middle, I like to use a box cutter. In kind of a sawing motion. Don't put a lot of force on it because you don't want to cut through what you've woven previously.
So there's a few things that are different once you've got the cardboard in. You want to make sure that your bundle will actually fit through the hole. And as the weaving goes on, that hole's going to get smaller and smaller. Your bundles will need to get smaller and smaller too. Tie on and continue. Pattern never changes. So roughing it in. What is nice about the cardboard is that you can use two hands and push the bundle up and then your hands free. You don't have to get your hands in and out of that every time. Pattern's roughed in, now it's time to pull tension. And it's very important not to leave the material on top of the cardboard. All the rest of the pattern has been under the cardboard, so you want that to continue under the cardboard. And it is a little trickier to, well, to see the corners, but the process hadn't changed. You should still, you know, it's a little harder to get in there, try to pinch those corners together. You're going to continue again every three strands making adjustments as the rails are filling in and as your the patterns are getting larger in the corners it's a little harder to tell what's 90 degrees switching from the thought of 90 degrees to parallel lines these lines so if this is parallel with this then as it closes in you're not going to end up with a gap in the middle or a gap on the edge. These are parallel to each other. These are parallel to each other. These are parallel, but this doesn't have to be parallel to this. So it's just each quadrant on its own. As you get closer to the middle, you have to shrink the size of the bundle that you're using. As long as the bundle still fits through the hole, you're in good shape. Eventually you're gonna to have to start pulling a single strand through. Here towards the middle, I only go with two corners at a time and have to do more adjusting. And the adjusting at this point is really trying to keep these guys good and parallel. When you get to the point that the bundle doesn't fit through the hole anymore, it's easier to pull the loop through as opposed to the tail. And the first time it's gonna be kind of a mess. By keeping a hand underneath, you can kind of control the mess. Hole in the middle gets smaller. It's more and more difficult to kind of determine where the middle is. So just make sure it's you've got a straightaway and then the strand comes over and pins that straightaway down. If you make a mistake, it's going to be obvious in the pattern. You can always back it out. The idea is to get enough material on the rails, and if you can fit another one in without the material around it buckling and jumping on top of each other, then you need to fit another one in. The bottom fills in a little quicker than the top, so here are the last few strands. Make sure I'm turning the chair over and making sure that there's space for the strands to to go on the underside there's always a little bit of doubling up if you're working with the material especially at the very end here it's really easy to get a kink so make sure you're feeling underneath um, and preventing that so let me get this last strand to lay flat And we'll do some more adjusting at the very end, but it looks pretty good. 
I'm going to flip the chair upside down, make space for one more strand on this side. Uh, and then it's a matter of filling the front and the back rails. Chairs are usually wider than they are deep. You end up with a small straight bit in the middle called a bridge. And that bridge is where you're just wrapping front rail to back rail and working from one side to the other. Here at the end, the hole is very small. It can be helpful to wrap the end with masking tape. It makes the end easier to see. All right. Couple in. Pull tension. And then we'll do a quick adjustment. You do have to continue to make adjustments. This time, you're going to be compressing in the middle and compressing on the rails as you have been the entire time, keeping these two strands parallel and these two strands parallel. As you close into the end, you want to make sure, or it's nice not to run out of material. Um, but you also don't want to deal with a giant bundle of material. So taking a measurement across where you have left. So here I'm about an inch. I know by measuring in here that one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven strands gets me an inch. Chairs are about the size of a forearm. So if I do seven wraps around, then I should have enough material to finish out. I'll add just a little bit extra. Now, throughout this whole process, we've been able to bury the knots kind of in this middle part of the pattern. Towards the end, there's no place to hide the knots anymore. So we will show up on the bottom. I like to put in the knot not too close to the middle, but especially not too close to the edge. When you start pulling tension, is this is the part that it really is helpful to have the chair turned sideways. So you can pull side to side instead of towards you and away from you. Keeping feeling underneath, making sure that there aren't any kinks and that you're not getting hung up on the knot that we tied. That's an easy way to end up with more slack is if your material has hung up on a knot. As the hole gets smaller, it's harder and harder to get the material through. If you take some of the strands and kind of pull them out of the way, then it's a little easier. It's another bonus for not tightening everything all at once. Point, I do need to make some adjustments make some adjustments on the front where the clamp was before. The adjusting. Uh, making space, probably have just a couple more strands. You can barely even see where the hole should be, but I want to fit a couple more strands in. So if you take this strand that you're working with and pull it backwards, you can usually free up a hole that way.
little adjusting. And it looks like maybe one more strand in either direction. Super helpful here at the end, lean on those pliers and coming from the bottom side, pliers in and kind of, it's the baby bird technique. Yeah. The, the... Oh. Right. <laughs> That should fill the front, and that should fill the back. Maybe we've got a, you know, a couple of feet of material left over, but it's much better than coming up short. All right. I like to finish off with a knot here in the middle as opposed to putting a tack on the rail or anything like that. I come straight across from where you're putting the strand in and grab two strands. You just get one, there's a chance of breaking them. So I'm pulling tight in that direction and then locking it into place that way. At that point, you can remove the clamp and get under here and again two on this side as well i've got the strand that i was working with and one next door pull this tight and kind of circling around the center and one more time under the first two strands and now i've got a swirl that goes all the way around this time, instead of continuing in this clockwise, I'm gonna go the opposite direction under these two strands and then pulling the tail through the loop. Not the only knot that you can do in the center. However, you can get that tied off securely is just fine. Add a little bit of wood glue to these knots that are visible, just in case it starts to try to undo for some reason. The weaving part is done. It's a matter of cleaning things up a little bit, adjusting strands out, go through and you can burnish using the wooden part of handle or the side of a screwdriver. But it's especially helpful if you have strands that are popping up just a little bit. The burnishing helps hold them into place. And this is kind of the final adjusting as we go around. There's a little bit of space here. So we're just pushing that space around so it's not as not as evident. Rush does take practice. Uh, you can do a fantastic seat. It might not look quite as uniform as this. It's gonna be perfectly sitable. Uh, by your second or third chair, you'll get a lot better feel for it. Once the seat dries overnight, a clear coat will help protect it from spills. We use a shellac coat, just straight shellac, a single coat, top and bottom, brush it on, easily wipeable if it gets onto any of the wood surface. The shellac does dry very quickly, and so you don't wanna take a break. You can see if you've hit it twice, and it'll look kind of striped in areas if your coating overlaps. And thank you for watching the Silver River Chairs channel. I like being out here. It's fun. <laughs> yes. Were you trapped? Were you trapped? You poor dog. <laughs> Woo, 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 woo.